Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for simpler plots next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Snake from the Metal Gear Solid series, and let's get this out of the way. When I put up the poll, I only had played Snake Eater and didn't even know there were multiple snakes. Thankfully, all the snakes are either clones or twins, so this can be a universal snake build. If you're disappointed, now you know how I feel when I did the research for this video and found out Snake is just a codename. This guy has no serpentine connections whatsoever. Take one box, put it with another. Let's look for one that's long and wide. start off with our goals for this build. First we need to be sneaky, like a sneaky little snake. Next we need some gadgets in case sneaking doesn't work, explosions are a solid backup. Finally we'll make sure that we can disguise ourselves so we can hide in plain sight. For stats we're going to be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you're keeping multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity is number one. The Metal Gear series is a stealth action game, or at least they're supposed to be. Intelligence next, you've got to understand the gadgets to use the gadgets. Wisdom after that, you can't and eat the snake until you find the snake. Constitution will follow. Snake is a tough dude, no further explanation necessary. Charisma is a little bit low. He's got a gruff charm, but we need other things more and we'll dump strength. Again, he's in good shape. We just can't get everything high. As I stated earlier in the video, Snake is just a name. He isn't an actual snake man, so no yawn tea. Very inhuman will have to do. Take the skulk or feet. It lets you hide while you're lightly obscured. You don't have disadvantage on perception checks in dim light, and you can miss shots from cover without blowing your cover. Instead, the guards will just go, huh? And think it must have been the wind or something. Bump dexterity and wisdom with your two free points. Take history for your skill of choice and the spy background for deception and stealth skills. Sneak in, and if you get busted, just try and play it off like you're part of the crew. Or you're just a box. A regular box. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing special in this box. Kick things off as a rogue. October is apparently National Rogue Month after all. You can grab four skills from the rogue list. Sleight of hand, athletics, perception, and investigation are all useful for infiltration. If you get expertise in two skills, I'm going to recommend stealth and deception. Deception will help you mitigate the low charisma score, and stealth will help you get that sneak attack advantage from hiding. Sneak attack, by the way, is something rogues get. It's a special D6 you get to add to the damage die of attacks if you have advantage on them, or if you have an ally within five feet of the enemy. As long as you're using a rogue-approved finesse or range weapon. Knives work, so do hand crossbows. Those are pistols for flavor if your DM doesn't want to get into firearm stuff. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. So dive into a vent or the bushes or a box if you can find one. Nobody suspects a box. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype and there are a couple of good options here. For me, it's a toss up between assassin and scout. I'll lean towards scout. We're going to get disguise shenanigans from an upcoming multi-class. Oops, spoilers. We multi-class a lot here. Hopefully you saw that coming. You're a survivalist giving you proficiency with nature and survival and automatically buffing that to be expertise. So you'll know which animals are tasty and which animals are less tasty but still edible. You're also a skirmisher, which lets you move half your movement speed as a reaction when an enemy ends their turn within five feet of you. That movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks, so get a move on and get back into cover as soon as possible. Sneak attack damage also increases to 2d6 here. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. More dexterity makes you more accurate, helps your stealth and your AC. It's so many good things for you all in one quick stat boost. We're going to bounce over to Artificer now. This is our first time using the new Artificer, which is probably going to make the jump from Unearthed Arcana to officially released material next month. Hopefully they don't change it too much. Otherwise, hello everyone watching in the future. I recorded this in October. How's the new Star Wars? You get magical tinkering, letting you make a tiny object you touch glow, emit a six second message, make some noise or stank, or have some sort of image that could be a picture or 25 words or less. This could be great fun for distracting guards while you sneak up behind them and get your CQC on. You can also cast some spells. This is a quirky class that requires you to have some tool proficiency, which I kind of like for Snake. He doesn't do magic, he uses gadgets. For cantrips, Shocking Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 2d8 lightning damage and prevents the target from taking reactions. Another great way to escape is tasing someone. Message lets you whisper to a creature within 120 feet of you and they can whisper back. It's like a little fantasy radio. For your first level spell, Cure Wounds lets you heal 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier in case someone broke your arm. Then threw you off a bridge into a river full of leeches. Rough day. Sky's Self lets you change your appearance for an hour. This can be seen through with an investigation check against your spell DC of 8, plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus. But obviously you got the best disguise and can probably prevent people from investigating it with a decent deception check first. For your final spell, Feather Fall lets you prevent falling damage as a reaction for up to 5 falling creatures for a little cipher action. 
Second level artificers can infuse items, letting you make some common objects, magical objects, at the end of a long rest. You know three infusions, but can only make two infused weapons at a time, switching them out on long rests. Repeating Shot lets you make a ranged weapon magical, it gives it plus one to attack and damage rolls, and you can ignore reloading or ammunition uses with it. Unlimited ammo may be an easy mode feature, but hey, I'm not complaining. Enhanced Weapon makes any weapon magical, adding plus one to attack and damage rolls, and letting you ignore resistances to non-magical damage. Put this on your knife and you can cut through anything, it's pretty good. Enhanced Armor adds one to the AC of an armor. I'd say you're in studded leather, so now that's 13 plus your dex modifier, that's the same as mage armor. Outfit yourself with the best equipment the business and get to work. Third level artificers get tool expertise, letting you double your proficiency bonus when you use tools you're proficient with. These tools count, hooray hurrah. You can also choose a specialization. The artillerist gets wood carving and smith's tools proficiencies as well as a wooden wand. Cool, not in character, but cool. You can also summon a magical turret with 18 AC and HP equal to five times your artificer level. You can command the turret as a bonus action to move up to 15 feet and act as a flamethrower that deals 1d8 fire damage to creatures in a 15 foot cone that fail at X dexterity save. You can make it a force ballista that makes a ranged spell attack against one creature in a 120 foot range, dealing 2d8 force damage and pushing the target 5 feet, or a defender giving allies within 10 feet temporary HP equal to 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. If you want to make it explode, that's also an option. For the dexterity save on creatures within 10 feet of it, dealing 3d6 force damage if they fail half if they succeed. You can summon this turret once per long rest, but can resummon it later with a spell slot. So, full confession, we chose this subclass for a spell it gets later, but as far as amenities go, a spider flamethrower turret? That's pretty cool. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Cap your dexterity to be the sneakiest gadgeteer that you can be. You also learn another infusion. Replicate magic item lets you replicate a magical item from a short list. Goggles of night let you see 60 feet in the dark, useful for a spy without dark vision. Fifth level artificers get arcane armament, letting you make two attacks instead of one if you're using an arcane magical infusion weapon thingy. You can also learn second level spells. Dark vision gives a creature you touch the ability to see in the dark for eight hours. So you can pop some night vision on a buddy or have dark vision when you didn't pick the goggles of night on your infusion list. Invisibility makes a target you touch invisible for up to an hour until they attack. That's some really high-tech camouflage. Pyrotechnics either lets you make a flash grenade with fireworks that blinds creatures that fail a constitution save in a 10-foot radius, or a smoke grenade with smoke, heavily obscuring a 20-foot radius for a minute. I like flash grenade, but you do you. This spell is from the Elemental Evil Player's Companion, but you can google it if you need to find the specifics. Sixth level artillerists get a wand prototype, letting you put a cantrip into a non-magical wand, I think the word for that is stick, and when you cast a cantrip, it deals extra damage equal to your intelligence modifier. Not super in character, but throw Firebolt in there. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 2d10 fire damage. You can also carry a third infused item, which is nice. Seventh level artificers get another infusion, but you can't carry another item. Kind of weird considering this is all you get from this level, but whatever. Enhanced Wand adds one to spell attack rolls while you're holding a wand. So turn a wand into a little taser for shocking grasp, I guess. I don't know. The other options are more in character. Eighth level artificers get another ability score improvement. More intelligence makes your artificer stuff better. Considering at this point we have more artificer levels than rogue levels, that's probably a good call. Ninth level artificer is why we stuck this out so long. You learn third level spells from the artillerist list, you get fireball. Forcing a dexterity save on creatures in a 20 foot radius and dealing 8d6 fire damage to those that fail, half to those that succeed. Stealth is fun, but sometimes you just need to bust out the rocket launcher. Glyph of Warding lets you set a magical mine on a 10 foot surface. You can store a spell of third level or lower inside or have it explode to deal 5d8 acid, cold, fire, thunder, or lightning damage to creatures that fail a dexterity save, half to those that succeed. If you want to go all out, put a fireball in there. Otherwise, just place the mine and wait for your enemies to forget it was there and then shout NOW! Back over to rogue, fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you have the damage from attacks you can see. You know how every snake player in Smash Bros just drops grenades everywhere and doesn't seem bothered when they blow themselves up? Yeah, that's uncanny dodge. You also have 3d6 sneak attack damage at this level. Sixth level rogues get expertise and two more skills. Athletics will help you mitigate your terrible strength score and survival will help you track enemies and go camping. You've earned a break. Take some time off. Seventh level rogues get evasion. Nobody is letting you have any time off. This lets you take half damage on failed dexterity saves and no damage on successful ones. So you can fireball right at your feet and not really worry about it. Still wouldn't recommend that. Your sneak attack also increases to 4d6. Eight level rogues get another ability score improvement. More intelligence means better gadgets and harder to avoid missiles. Big brain equal big boom. That's just science. Ninth level scouts get superior mobility, permanently adding 10 to your movement speed so you can roll around at the speed of sound or just like, you know, 13 miles per hour max. 
Your sneak attack is 5d6 though, so that's nice. 10th level rogues get another ability score improvement. Camp off your intelligence to make the big boss the big brain. Help your disguises, help your healing, help your weird spider turret, all that good stuff. Our capstone is the 11th level of rogue for reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll for a skill you have proficiency with is an 11. You've been doing this a while. Honestly, it's no surprise you're unflappable at this point. Your sneak attack also increases to 66. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're great at the stealth game with a plus 17 modifier, the ability to go fully invisible, and a lot of great methods to distract unwitting guards. You've also got plenty of options to get out of the fight and back into stealth mode with multiple disengagement options, high speed, and superior hiding abilities from skulker finally your damage is nice and solid multiple attacks sneak attack if you play your cards right and magical weapons to ignore those pesky physical resistances for weaknesses your turret won't play nice with cunning action both requiring your bonus action and forcing you to choose a favorite child once per round your spell slots are also pretty limited the artificer is closer to an eldritch knight in terms of spell casting ability than something like a wizard finally your strength is low which makes climbing jumping and not getting knocked around kind of an issue it's not like you're gonna have to fight a giant ladder as a boss fight. Sneak around like a snake, take your shots carefully, and win your fights with a slow and steady tactical stealth approach. Or fireball your feet, summon a murder turret and wing it. That's what I'd do. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. Snake was saved in a redemption pool, so let's keep the redemption going. Vote for Zaro, Luffy from One Piece, or Mordecai from Borderlands. Come back Thursday for a hell of a singer.